But without further ado, the Cook County website. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very special hack night. First, I would like to reintroduce the Cook County team. If everybody could stand up or at least wave. That's uh, Kathy Lynch, our presenter, director of IT communications, Brant Serkster, our project manager, Jennifer Sanchez, public information officer, just like me. Josh isn't standing up, but Josh is our open data guy. And uh, last but not least, in the county of Cooks, we call him the chef, Adam Clement. <laughs> I have to tell you that I, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I have um, worked for Cook County or companies doing work with the county for over 25 years. And I've never seen such a uh, intense focus on technology. It's just amazing. And it all starts, of course, with the board president, Tony Preckwinkle, who made it very clear from day one that she considered technology a big part of her effort to modernize government improve services, and also get a bigger return on the taxpayers' dollars. Uh, as a result of that leadership, and I should say that uh, President Preckwinkle wanted to come tonight. Uh, we had a discussion about scheduling, but there was a conflict, so I got the, uh, the nod. But uh, as a result of her leadership, our plate is overflowing with work. We've got uh, a big push to modernize. We have a lot of platforms, we have scores of applications that need to be migrated off of old platforms, and we have a load of new projects that we're working on. We're also trying to bring new people into the Bureau, and Joel's an example of what we've tried to do. Uh, we've tried to find talent. We, we entered the office five years ago. We tried to find talent internally that uh, needed to be tapped, and Kathleen Lynch is an example of that. So we've got a much more passionate group uh, at work today. And um, we're, we're really working on uh, a number of different projects, the website being one. The goal here, and I'll let Kathleen zero in on it, was to make something far more user friendly than, than what existed before, and also help people get where they want to go uh, quickly. So uh, I'll, rather than keep talking, which I'll keep it at your, uh, your short segments, I forgot the title of it, but I'll turn it over to Kathleen. Thank you, by the way. Hey, Hack Night. Um, so I'm super excited. This is like really long labor. Um, and now you can see our baby. Um, so what I decided to do after some conversations with our folks here, um, you know, you guys know how to travel websites. You can go, but I figured you kind of maybe want to know a little bit more um, behind the story. Uh, but first, you know, one must brag and show their baby pictures. Uh, <laughs> We were able to launch at the end of, Jul of June, uh, and we were uh, floored with some of the, uh, the feedback. Uh, County once makes it easier for you to find a lost pet, apply for a job, request a birth certificate. The new site asks users up front, how can Cook County help you today? And a thing of beauty, honest. Don't normally gush about things local government does, particularly Cook County, but I have to say the county's new website and data portal officially rolled out, and it is a first piece class of work. I just wish everything in local government ran so smoothly. So first, let's wait. We need to roll back a little bit and maybe take a look at where we've come from. <laughs> I had to pull this out of files from 2003. Um, so our origin story. Um, why don't you give an idea of how we went about this, how we got to where we are. Uh, it wasn't so quick as you might have alluded to, never is. Um, but first assemble the team. So the Bureau of Technology was lead on this project, um, small but mighty. Uh, we also had fantastic support from the president's office. Um, they were a real key component uh, to some of our success here. Uh, our, we had a vendor with this, Clarity, with um, with the uh, subs of Duo Consulting and Turing Group. Uh, and we also had the great partner of Smart Chicago and their Cut Group. And we'll talk a little bit more about their involvement later. 
So everything starts with problems, things you want to fix, things you want to make better. Uh, we really never felt it was a good fit with what we had, uh, and so we knew we had to find a better way. Um, our, our site, many government sites, focus so much on following the org chart. This department has that site, that department has that site. And the problem with this is public rarely ever knows who does what, and especially if you have mystery department names like risk management, you have no idea that employee benefits are out of risk management. So things like that are very are non-intuitive and we really need to get rid of the org chart and get to the main point, the services. What does government do? They provide services to the public, to perhaps other governmental bodies. Our purpose is the services we provide. Those need to be in the front. So we need to unbury, raise up from the, the ground all of these services. Um, they're also scattered across so many disparate offices, but often are needed to be clustered together. There's often companion services. If you get this, you have to do this first. And oh, that means you have to go over to this website and click 12 links down. So we needed to get those services up and in a more, um, a more dynamic space so that we could use them in a lot broader way, set of ways. Um, and mobile, mobile is really challenging and the key thing, folks, is not just that we're all on the go and needing to play pokey go, but we also <laughs> are, we've got to realize that this is the only way that a lot of our constituents get the internet. They're not sitting at a desk, they're not turning it on at home, this might be it. So it's really critical that this is the same as this for us. And we weren't really structured well from a, a, a CMS perspective for a decentralized large-scale enterprise. We really needed to get that straightened out so that we had better segregation from privacy perspective, or uh, from permissions perspectives, better workflow, uh, just a better way to decentralize this content and allow everybody to ma maintain their portion of the pie. So our goals, um, some of them are quite simple. Uh, simple, engaging, clean UX. We wanted to try and make sure that it, it was fairly straightforward to the point. This also helped for the mobile views as well. Make sure that it was clean. Um, service focused, as I noticed, as I mentioned before. Um, not only get them as quickly as possible to the services that they need, uh, but also make sure that they know about related services too that they might not realize that they need. Uh, and I said before, dynamic content objects, we wanted to break these content pieces down so that each one of them could be used in a variety of ways and places. Responsive, as I mentioned, mobile was key. So we had to make sure that this site fit whatever device you were looking at and accessible. Um, the federal government uh, is going to actually be soon not only adopting W3C instead of five, for their 508, uh, Section 508 accessibility for websites, but they're also going to be pushing it down to mandate at local government levels to make, mandate local government to be 508 compliant. So we are ahead of the curve. We are um, about this far from uh, being uh, W3C compliant, um, and we're very excited about that. And part of uh, one of that 10% is not only some work that we've got to do, but we also um, are going to be doing some usability testing across the board to make sure that it really actually is. It doesn't just fit the compliance process report that you, you run through, but that it actually is usable, and if there's any changes that we need to make, to make it more so. So a process, pretty short, but there's so much packed behind this. Information architecture analysis was really the key. We really made a big point of breaking, through, breaking down our information so that we really could get a sense of where we had specific you know, content types, what, how, what made them unique. Um, how we can get specifically those issues like services broken out, but what other types of content needed to be much more dynamic. How do we structure that? How do we group it in the way we present it on the home page and on the global nav that travels throughout? Um, a <laughs> exhaustive inventory of all the services across the county. And one key thing that we really were, were sensitive to was that, again, because not everybody knows our org chart, they also don't know who's not on our org chart, but who they all think might be on our org chart. So even though you see 
the housing authority of Cook County, well, that's not actually in the Cook County government budget. It's the housing authority of Cook County, but people will think, go to Cook County because it's the housing authority of Cook County. So we've looked at what are some of these quasi-agencies, and some of them have a much tighter relationship, for instance, like the land bank authority. Um, some of them might have a more distant one, like the housing authority. Um, but we wanted to make sure that if you would kind of think about this group, with Cook County that you would have a presence here um, and that we would get you to the right place. We also wanted to make sure that the same could be said for services. We didn't want to just say, oh, well, that's not ours. If people are coming here because it was maybe related to services we provide, like I said, you have to do step A before B before C, and this is with somebody else, we still want to make sure that you know where and how to get there. So we wanted to provide at least a point or point jump off place so you could get to there make sure that your thinking in context still gets you where you need to go. And user testing was really important to us, and honestly, we didn't do as much as we really wanted to do, um, but that doesn't mean we're stopping there. But early user testing, we actually, we started getting to the, wire, after we started getting to the wireframe stage uh, of this project, um, we took it to user testing. Smart Chicago, if you are not familiar with them, I'll do the ding ding cut groups, uh, civic user testing group. Uh, they are fantastic. They get volunteers from the public that come in and will do uh, user testing on applications, on websites, and wireframes. Uh, we actually worked with them to expand our user, uh, the volunteer base beyond the city of Chicago into the suburbs so that we could actually be more all county rather than just focusing on the city in terms of the people that we draw from. And that's great for them because now suburban areas can leverage their services as well. Um, and we did this at the wireframe stage, which was, I guess, pretty unique from what I understand. Sonia in the back, props to you. Um, uh, to really get them early on because we wanted to know if we called this this, do you, does that mean the same thing that we think it is? Will you go that way that we think you're going to go based on the way we've structured things? Um, if you're looking for this, how will you get there? And we wanted to do it early on before there was any color or any graphics. We wanted to make sure we had the right plan before we moved forward. And so it was really great. We learned a lot of wonderful things and I highly recommend, you know, especially in a civic space, this is who you're serving. So we tend to get a little bit in our bubble sometimes, and we know what we're talking about. We needed to make sure everybody else knew what we're talking about as well. So these were some really important parts of it. Um, in terms, uh, and hold on, I'll get to, there's other parts too. Ah, yeah, competitive analysis was a big part of our, our thinking about what we were going to do and how we were going to do it, uh, especially also with our design. Um, and we said, what are the top government sites doing? And how, were, and how successful were they? I mean, some of the stuff was cool, but was it really useful? Like, did it actually help? Um, I know one I actually, like, Facebook pulled all my friends from that area and said, hey, have you seen this new site? Is, is it actually useful? And it was really interesting to see what they had to say back. So we had to say, like, are we Texas, y'all? And with their vernacular, um, are we maybe Utah with these, you know, big gorgeous images, but also with a lot of, I mean, Utah, man, they're, they do, they've been doing a lot of great stuff for a really long time, but they've got really, you know, just gorgeous sites and great UX. Um, are we Hawaii? Um, you know, and Hawaii was really interesting because it was cool and best of web, but it has this like horizontally kind of navigation and, you know, wow, that's really cool, but we had to go, is this really useful? Um, and the penultimate, oh, you know, um, <laughs> yes, plain as a salty and cracker, but uh, really, really, you know, uber useful. They think about every single aspect of every single part of their site. They are, gosh, wow, like get me on a plane, right? Um, these guys are super cool, but what are we? I and mean, what are the key things that we need to take away from and that we want to carry into what we do? And so we had to figure out, you know, like, what's our secret identity here? What is the thing that we are going to uncover and become at the end of the day? Um, so now the back end on this, um, this is open source. That was another part of our sort of set of requirements is that we wanted to use open source. Um, this is actually um, 
I don't think that's an actual full-on ordinance, uh, but I think it's resolution for utilizing open source where we can. Um, and we did use Drupal 7 for this. We did go through a long, uh, arduous mind pull on, with, on whether we were going to move to the eight uh, or not. A little too early at the point we were doing development. As I said, this was not a fast development. So we, uh, we decided to hold tight on seven for a while just to keep uh, be a little conservative in terms of what we uh, what we were going to be able to do. Uh, it's primarily Drupal core. Some contributed. We have Workbench. We have Solar. We have some custom work. Um, unfortunately, I don't think any uh, of the key developers were able to come tonight. I really wanted to come to speak more geek than I can. Um, and uh, we do our hosting at AWS. Um, it's just a way easier way to make the world go around. Um, and we are really looking at the integration with a lot of the other things that we do. Socrata with open data. We are um, working right now. Our GS people are hard at work on getting us into ArcGIS online. And we're super excited to see how we can start integrating this contextually into the content we provide. Um, Legistar is where all of our uh, board activity is, uh, and we are looking to get that better and tightly integrated so that you can see in context where there's stuff you need to know about um, that's going on with our board. Um, so let's see. I will give you a uber quick tour. Let's see. I'm trying to escape here so I can go to, oh, sorry. You know, <laughs> I haven't touched my Mac in a long time. There you go. Thank you, sir. See, Cook yeah. County. There it I is. Have it. I've been uh -huh. here before. So I will give you a quick orientation just so you can kind of see how all these pieces now fall into place with what we're doing today. Puppy. Puppy. Aww. How could you not? I'm sorry, getting old here. Um, so yeah, puppy. And uh, you know, these, uh, of course, it's, uh, it's cached a little bit. But we have these great hero images that really we wanted to show you the softer side, but also sides of Cook County that you might not even think about. Um, the Chicago Metals Consortium is an economic development uh, initiative to get all these major medical or metal manufacturing and processing groups together from an economic development perspective to see how we can make the county better for that kind of business. Um, lead standards on some of our buildings. I mean, there's, if you every time you go, you'll see another great thing and maybe even the puppy. Uh, but as the article said, the first thing we have for you is how can Cook County help you today? This is not about a news article or a Paul pick or something like that. This is about we are here to help you. How can we do that? And that has a solar search engine behind it so that you can say go for, oh, let's see, maybe we want to look at pets and see what we have about pets today. Um, and so you can go do those searches. It uh, has a faceted search for you, kind of like Amazon. You can kind of pick shoes versus movies. Here you can say, well, am I interested in services or news or agencies? Etc., um, and that helps you sort down the world so that you can figure out, oh, I'm really just looking at services. Oh, there's a Spain neuter. Oh, look, there's a low cost rabies and microchip clinic. And oh, look, I can see here that, oh, you have va oh, vaccines, and there's no, oh, there's an upcoming you know, set of clinics, and here's some information. So we really want to make sure that that information, the events, the news, these are all bits that can be sliced and diced and put into lots of different ways the way they should, contextually where you need to see it. Scrolling down, we've, we've pulled out some of our top services into residents, business, and government-focused um, uh, persona groups uh, to filter these around. We can bring these, change these up with seasonally as news comes up, as it's relevant um, to bring various service bits up to the top. Uh, of course, news, because it's news. But we can also feature all of the events across the board, whether it be board meetings, vaccine clinics, uh, or West Law classes at the law library. It's, um, you know, we have a law library. Did you all know? Um, it's. Uh, Okay. Um, the other key thing here is our global navs. I want to, this is actually, we've seen through the traffic, a really key um, item that people 
are really using a lot in their navigational process. And these are some key action services of things that people perhaps care about and want to pursue. And you can also go through and look at all of them and be able to look for any of these things you might want to apply, report, find, request, or pay for with the county. We've also broken our services down uh, by resident services, businesses, and government uh, services and offices. And when you go into our services group, um, we group these into what we call sort of mind map groups. Um, like I said, they're not always, a group of related services are not always from the same agency. So we've put them into some intuitive, but we hope, uh, groupings to help people be able to find related information uh, all across the board. So we're, and like we said, not from stuff, even if it's not sort of really us, like the Forest Reserve, they have their own site, but people might come looking for it to us for information about the Forest Reserve. We still want to make sure that they find it there. We still have agency love. You can still find things about agencies if you know where you're going and you love the org chart. You can still go there and if you want to find that stuff about animals this way, you can sort down quickly and find the agency that you're looking for there. Uh, and still have the official love. We need to show our smiling faces of our president of our Board of Commissioners uh, and all of the electeds uh, that we have in the county. So you can go find out how to contact them. Talk to the Iceman. Um, calendar, trying to get as much of a consolidated calendar as we can so we can really have everything. I mean, it's so basic, but it's something we've been missing for such a long time. Uh, we definitely have, of course, news so that our PIOs can get their news uh, into the world. And let's see. So I want to get out of here now and go back. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I am, unfortunately, a business world Mac noob. So lessons learned in our evolution through our superhero dom. Um, break the PDF addiction. Um, we have it, and we still use it a ton. But one thing we keep seeing with the departments trying to put their content up is that they keep clinging to the PDF. And we want to explode the PDF and get them out of it and get the information on the page as much as possible. So where we do need to have PDFs for like reports or a form or things like that, great. But we're really trying to work with them to get them to get the stuff, get the content out of there, and make sure it's on the page, too. We can search inside the PDF, but it's really, let's get it right on the page and make it easier, OK? Um, move to open data wherever possible. We have been in this process of looking at all of the content, looking at where is their information that we really should be bringing out as open data. Um, we've actually taken a lot of the PDFs that were reports or things that needed to be out there and actually captured them so that we have a bunch of metadata in the front of it and then a download to the whole doc and embedded that contextually where it's relevant through the site. Um, so, and looking for where is there, okay, well, where's the data about this? Let's get that out there, make it contextually available within the site. Transitioning the department content managers, it was really challenging and it still is. It took them, it's taking them a while to get their minds around the new model, and we're actually looking at setting up sort of regular consulting sessions with each of the departments so that we kind of look at what they're doing, look at their traffic, get their pain points, figure out better ways to do what they're doing continually so that we can help them get better at this too. And cut the cord, you know, we could have been diddling around with this for a really long time still before we just got it out the door. So we really had to just make a concerted effort to say, you know what? Evolution will continue. We've got to get this out here and have a supportive leadership team. We really did. Um, you know, the president's office, um, our BOT leadership have all been just incredibly supportive in this, you know, different way of doing things. This is not the Cook County norm, to be honest. I've been with the county for pushing 14 years. Adam still has me beat, uh, but it's it takes a long time to kind of get this kind of a thing here. Um, and having a leadership team that was really ready to go with us on this was really, really helpful. Uh, and as this is a 1.0, the evolution will continue. We don't see this as done. We have a lot of planned future development. We, um, there's a feedback button. We look at that feedback. We relish that feedback, good, bad, or indifferent. Completeness would help, not just saying this sucks, it doesn't help me. Um, so, uh, 
and the analytics, you know, we come through our, our area analytics, watching the traffic, see, okay, why is that happening? We want to learn and fix it and make it better. Early on, we found a bunch of things. We're like, why is this happening? Oh, geez, and we quickly are changing some of the things just to try and get them to where we need them to go. So we are very interested in trying to make this better for the users. Public user testing is something we're going to, is also part of our planned continued development. We want to make sure that the things we do are actually things that are going to work. Um, governance, we are establishing a, a good governance group here to make sure that the way we're doing things is planned and isn't just rational because somebody likes it, that we vet it as a group before we decide to move forward with it. We're going to be adding things like social media expansion so that we have a lot more channels to get information out to you and integrate it and get them back into the information here on the site. Uh, and any ideas? We really look forward to this feedback from you guys. This is very early on, and we have a bunch more information still yet to, to add in here uh, that we'd really like to get in here. And so we really look forward to ideas from folks on what are we doing? What could we do better as we go forward? And we love to answer any of your questions that you have for us. I thank you guys so much. This is, we're really excited to have this finally out there to you and to see what you have to say. Freeform? Sure, go for it. having governance, you know, and that's part of what we're trying to do, having a standard, having a standard way that something is done or presented or the tools that you use to do X or Y or Z. And trust me, we got a lot of agencies in here and they have had nothing but fun things to suggest and about how we did this wrong. Um, it's a, and so part of it is through sort of having that governance as your backbone to fall against and say, really, oh, so you think agencies should now be called offices? OK, well, let's put this to the test then. And that way we can say, OK, look, this is what we had decided and vetted, but if we really think that it's necessary for some reason and there's a lot of push, great, let's put it in front of public user testing. Let's have some A-B testing done and see which resonates more with people. Do people think that the word offices means locations more than they do think that it means agencies? Or are they right? Maybe offices is more part of the public vernacular than agencies is. Um, so it, it's more saying, this is what we've decided, and here's the process for if we need to, if, if there's a decision that maybe we should change it, let's make sure it's not a change just for because somebody said so, but that we actually vet why, come up with a decision together, and make sure that it's the right decision to use. Yes? Can you talk more about how much of the work was done using external consultants yeah. and how much of it was done with uh, internal consultants? Uh, lots. Uh, we, um, we, part of our contract was for uh, build and maintenance for ongoing development work. So we admittedly are, are not the Drupal experts, but we are trying to ramp up our internal Drupal skills so that we can do more heavy lifting ourselves. Um, the, we can't always be as nimble as we might like from a, a, a skills and a hiring perspective and a staffing perspective, budgets, things like that. And so sometimes outsourcing is, is how we can ramp up to that. And, but we are working on um, now maturing our internal skills so that we can do more on our own and continue more on this way. But we made sure that we've got the belt and suspenders of support for, for development for a while. And we needed the we needed also the sorry the 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 expertise, um, the maturity. Uh, if we go out and start learning it, we're not going to be very good at what we do and not have a very good approach to it. So we really need some expertise to help us get there as we ramp up. Yes. Um, <clears throat> to what extent are other or particular agency websites going to start being as useful as this? Uh, uh, within Cook County? Yeah. Like, so for instance, Oh, yeah. You know, uh, I can't. OK, so what I can say is that um, we actually, so when we did this, um, we did it with the mindset that we were building a core. Uh, we wanted to build a core site model that then could be leveraged 
if other agencies, other elected offices wished to leverage this, they could. And actually the recorder, not the recorder of deeds, but the Board of Review was actually in, written in the contract as our first user that's actually part of scope. And so they are going to now be, they just finished a really big project on there and they're now going to be working with our vendor to uh, take this core and basically apply it to their web content and move from there. Um, and I believe, uh, I think the clerk is also going to clerk, uh, the county clerk, so vitals, elections. Um, they're uh, starting that project as well. Uh, I think public defender. So we, we've basically tried to be efficient and share, at least starting internally, to leverage the same things that we've built so that they can start using the same kind of thinking and modeling to expand to their sites as well. And we can't say that all of them do because they're all elected, they get to do what they want with their websites, but we're at least trying to make it available and as an option for them. We've kind of done the dirty work in a sense, some of the hard work in the back end and what we're, the, the idea is then that we will continue to maintain that core, any customizations, configurations, model, you know, modules that were done for our core, we will continue to develop and maintain so that they can ride off of that. And also then as these groups start up, we will bring them in when we're looking at any kind of new development, new functionality features, vet with them too to see what their needs are when we're doing this as well so that it really can meet as many needs as possible. Sure. Sir. As you were doing the planning for this, did you look at other government websites around the world and, and say these are three or four or five that you think are really great that you want to emulate? Yeah, I mean, you saw some of them here. Um, some of them were, like I said, like more cool, or they like we did what one best of web, what you know, UK was sort of for years has been the you know, the thing like I troll, like people trolled Kim Kardashian. Um, but you know, they, um, you know, we lo really looked at who are some of these sites that do really good work that we think seems to be good, in intuitive, useful. Um, so yeah, some of the ones I showed up here are some of the ones that we've looked at, and they're probably a lot more back there on the list of things we've we've reviewed and, and thrown into our mental pool over time. Sir. Uh, I was just curious if we were able to disclose some of the traffic statistics. Uh, so what do you want, just like, like how many we get a day kind of thing, or I mean like. Whatever. Yeah, sure. Um, I, we get about anywhere between seven to 10,000 uh, uh, seven, seven to 10,000 uniques a day on weekdays. Weekends we go into hibernation, so it's great because I get maintenance time uh, if I need it. But yeah, we, so we get, that's, yeah, that's probably about right for our, our, our main aggregate on the what site. What's the length of visit for the old site? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know what? I really would say it totally depends because there's some stuff where you, there's some outlier sites like if they would go to watch the board meeting page, they're on for hours and that's long tail, you know. So um, that's a really good question. I'm just trying to think of some good averages to give you. Um, I mean, I was I typically saw visits like in the three, two, three, four minute range and there's also times where we open a window to something else and then they'll come back. So, you know, there were some things that didn't, fit a normal model, uh, but those are things we are looking at now on the path and then how quickly they're in out, uh, you know. Oh God, me too. <laughs> yeah. Is there any last question? Which, the, 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 that is actually one of the things we've been looking at um, in is how we can bring and expose some of the analytics out to the site and where that's actually useful versus just like geek, you know, where I geek, I mean, I'll sit all afternoon on, on Google Analytics, if you let me. Um, but we'd like to see what what's like relevant and useful, and then make sure we can get that out there, and, and maybe even contextualize it. You know, where certain things are in context. Uh, so, okay, who is it? Oh, I'm sorry. She was like waiting earlier. I got it. Um, I, I was wondering what um, what do you do to help people break the PDF habit? What kind of <laughs> what are you offering them? <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, it's actually like modeling and, and, and explaining, and that's part of why, you know, we will sometimes sit with them when we were going through things like, you know, what if we put more on the page, and it's here too, but let's like bring this all and put it here so they see it right away. Um, you know, so it's just sort of pointing it out sometimes. They're so used to just, here's my PDF, and I put it here, and people link and open it. They don't think 
about it. It's hard for them to get out of that rut. So that's part of the reason why I said that we were actually looking to, to do sort of consulting gigs with each of them regularly. So we can kind of look through those things, look for areas where we can say, what about this? And how can you? Yeah, I mean, it, in terms of just t getting the content stripped out and then just adding it as straight content to the page, kind of working through it with them and showing them how they could do it a little differently. And I really think sometimes that just individual hand-holding with groups, you know, we, we did it with some where they were having particular issues and we'd sit and like, well, what if we did and we put them as these types of things? Oh, that's everything. And, you know, all of a sudden it breaks the dam and they're fine. So I think sometimes it, it is that kind of hand-holding. Change management is a really challenging issue with with the project rollout here, and it's going to be an evolving thing as well. So I think hand-holding and demoing and showing them why it's different and better this way. And they can edit it way easier, too, but anyway. <laughs> OK, and I think that was it. Yeah, and we will be around for a while afterwards, so as our own little baby breakout. So if you do have additional questions or just wonderful things you'd love to tell us. We, we're, you know, we're broken free from the question part. So, you know, come tell us. But no, we're seriously, we're, we're really excited uh, to hear what people have to say. And we are excited to see what happens, too. We know that there's a lot of evolving that still needs to go on. And we can't wait to be like the guy in the end here. So thank you guys so much for your time and your attention.